Hello, welcome. Thank you for joining us on this edition of News 2. I'm Sandra Goman Singh. In our top story, downtown Charlotte Amali was a buzz late Tuesday afternoon when a large yacht went up in flames in Charlotte Amali Harbor. The Virgin Islands Fire Service was on the scene and reported that the luxury yacht was towed away from the marina and that the fire was under control by mid-afternoon. At the time, there is still a great deal of smoke due to the fiberglass and other materials burning. Witnesses also report that the smell of burnt material was strong from Havenside to the waterfront area. A large plume of smoke could be seen from the waterfront as the fire ate through at least two decks of the luxury yacht. According to witnesses, there was no traffic in the waterfront area by the Senate as traffic was blocked off from the Sheldon Mali High School to Yacht Haven Grand to the legislative buildings. No injuries have been reported, according to a government house press release. We will prov provide updates as they are made available. Virgin Islanders may not be able to vote for president, but as the recent Republican caucus proved, some can vote for a delegate who can cast a vote for a presidential nominee at the Republican National Convention in Cleveland. That very process is being questioned by four unsuccessful candidates who allege ballot tampering and a disregard for caucus and Virgin Islands rules. News News April Night has an update. These four Republicans didn't say it outright, but newcomers freshly situated in the Virgin Islands might have manipulated the local Republican caucus. My experience with John Yob, first time was through email when he was working for Rand Paul's campaign and they're trying to set up a fundraiser here in St. Croix. Here's what we know about top vote-getters John Yob and his wife Erica. They got the top spots out of six who get to go to the 2016 RNC. The Yobs, who were based in Michigan, wrote the book Chaos, a guide for influencing the upcoming contested convention. I found it a particular interest to me as to why somebody who wrote a book like that would move here pretty suddenly before this election. And so then, you know, more questions were asked and I have no question that they have moved here. The question is when. On March 4th, election supervisor Caroline Fox stated in a letter that Yob falsified residency dates to meet local eligibility requirements. Yob sued the election system and a St. Croix judge issued a restraining order that put Yob back on the ballot. With the TRO, the residency issue is out for now. Still, there are other allegations against the newcomers. I received a campaign letter. In that campaign letter, there was also an absentee ballot, a verification form, and also directions on how to complete an absentee ballot. This set of instructions for filling out absentee ballots tells the voter to mail the ballot not to State Chair John Canigata, but to Lindsay Alon, one of the delegates elected on Thursday and also new to the territory. I hope that when it all gets resolved and we get to the bottom of all these things, maybe the misunderstandings, Maybe there is nothing to these things, or maybe there are things. Reporting for News 2, I'm April Knight. Now, the fourth candidate who spoke to News 2 was Humberto O'Neill, husband of Republican superdelegate Liliana Bellardo de O'Neill, who criticized the lack of Spanish language voting materials during the caucus. Meanwhile, Labor Commissioner Catherine Hendry also responded to questions during the press conference called by Attorney General Claude Walker. As we reported, the AG announced that a Superior Court judge issued a restraining order preventing Sugar Bay from firing more employees. Commissioner Hendry spoke on EDA benefits as well as who should answer for the allegedly illegal employment practices at Sugar Bay. They're employees, they're affected employees yeah. of Sugar Bay Resort, first and foremost. They, she was laid off by Sugar Bay Resorts. So they are the ones who have the responsibility for the employment practices that affect Ms. Webster. Sugar Bay is in the process of attaining more um, uh, new property management, from my understanding. But at the same time, they have employees on their payroll that are now being affected pursuant to terminations. We have the businesses that don't have the tax exemptions that are still trying to make it happen. And we've, we've got to continue to move forward on what the purpose of these um, benefits are. 
Senator Jean Ford, chairman of the Committee on Education and Workforce Development, said that he and his staff spent much of Monday in discussions with various stakeholders, including affected employees, currently employed persons at the Sugar Bay Re Resort, the commissioner and assistant commissioner of labor, the attorney general's office, and the VI Workers Union, which represents some Sugar Bay employees, and has urged the resort to ensure that its human resources personnel comply with the provisions of VI law. He also noted that the question of whether the resort deliberately sought to sidestep other provisions of the VI plant closing law is a determination that will have to be made by the court. A VI delegation from the territories currently in Fort Lauderdale, Florida for the 2016 Sea Trade Cruise Global, including Governor Kenneth E. Mapp. The event is the cruise industry's premier global event that is expected to bring together all facets of the international cruise business and hope to lure visitors to the islands. Following a welcome reception in Miami Sunday that was co-sponsored by the VI Department of Tourism, the event workshops began Monday and expected to draw more than 11,000 registered attendees from around the world as it runs through the end of the week. The conference's trade show floor opened and featured close to 800 exhibitors from 83 countries today, Tuesday. Senator Kenneth Gittins is one of the attendees. Here's more. This is truly an event where we can connect globally. There is a great global market out there just waiting to come to the Virgin Islands and enjoy our rich heritage and natural beauty. Our islands are a perfect combination of diversity, a gem waiting to be shown off, and our laws and marketing strategies have to change with the needs of tourists to uh, create a product that will be beneficial to not only our economy, but also to our residents and the people who visit our shores. Turn our attention to crime reports. VIPD officers are investigating the shooting of two individuals identified as 26-year-old Robert Brown and 33-year-old Nokia Shaw. That occurred in the Good Hope condominiums Monday evening at approximately 8.06 p.m. According to preliminary reports, the 911 emergency call center received a call via radio from an on-duty officer of shots being fired around the Wim and Campo Rico area. A second phone call was received indicating that there was a gunshot victim in the vicinity of a Good Hope townhouse. Officers came in contact with the two gunshot victims, a male and female with multiple gunshot wounds. The two were rushed by ambulance to the Wallaby Hospital and were unable to give any further information. Detectives recovered a bag in the area which contained what appeared to be a high-powered rifle. This shooting incident remains under active investigation. Call the police hotlines if you have any information. Also on Sunday, March 13th, about 11 a.m., the 911 emergency call center received a report of a possible discharge of gunfire in the vicinity of the Campo Rico turf area. Officers found the victim bleeding from his upper right thigh, sitting in the grass adjacent to a light pole on a private residential property. They spoke with the victim who stated that he'd been hanging out on the Campo Rico turf next to the gazebo when he observed two unknown male individuals dressed in all black with their faces covered firing shots towards him. He began to flee and was shot in the right thigh. EMTs resport, transported the victim to the Wallowee Hospital for medical treatment. Also Sunday, March 13, at 1.11 a.m., officers responded to the call of a disturbance in Sunny Acres, Christiansted. According to the complainant, he just arrived at his residence when he heard footsteps approaching him from behind. He turned around as the suspect was walking toward him with a long firearm pointed towards him. He had a machete and in his position, possession and swung at the suspect several times. The complainant said his neighbor came to his aid and assisted in retrieving the firearm from the suspect and was able to place him in handcuffs. The suspect sustained lacerations and was transported by ambulance to the Wallaby Hospital for medical treatment. While at the hospital, officers say the suspect made several utterances admitting to robbery. Turn our attention overseas. Voters in five states head to the polls today with special attention on the winner-take-all contest in Ohio and Florida. 99 delegates are up for grabs in Florida's GOP, Florida primary, and 66 in Ohio. The Buckeye State, crucially important, with jo Governor John Kasich betting his campaign's future on a win there. Reed Binion reports. Super Tuesday may very well be Survival Tuesday for establishment Republicans, their last big chance to firmly impede Donald Trump's path to the party's nomination. Their best chances appear to be in Ohio, where polling shows Governor John Kasich in a tight race with Trump. 
The wind's going to be blowing. It'll be at my back for the first time in this election. Ohio's importance not lost on the Donald, who spent more time in the Buckeye State than anywhere else this weekend. Your governor, as you know, voted when he was a congressman, voted for NAFTA. Ohio has never, ever come back from that. Meanwhile, 2012 GOP nominee Mitt Romney stumped for Kasich Monday. Unlike the other people running, he has a real track record. A Kasich Ohio win was one half of Romney's pitch to stop Trump from winning the nomination. The other half, a win in Florida for Marco Rubio, currently lagging in the polls in his home state. Ted Cruz firmly rejecting Romney's anti-Trump strategy, saying he's the only contender who can stop the front runner. There is only one campaign that has beaten Donald Trump repeatedly and that can and will beat Donald Trump. The nightmare scenario for establishment Republicans, a Trump win in both Florida and Ohio, vastly solidifying his chances of being the nominee. On the Democratic side, the battleground is in the Midwest, with Clinton hoping to deliver a knockout blow to Sanders before the race shifts westward. I'm Reed Binion reporting. Keeping our eye on the economy, let's take a look at the New York Stock Exchange with our Stock Market Watch. According to the numbers there, the Dow up 22, NASDAQ and S&P down, NASDAQ 21, S&P 500 also down, negative 3. Coming up on News 2, it's Tsunami Preparedness Week. What Vitima is doing to educate the community and prepare for the big exercise we've been speaking about this week. Plus, it's time for our VI History Quiz. Who was a key player in the preservation of the traditional dance in the U.S. Virgin Islands called Bambula? We'll be right back. Welcome back. This week, it's all about tsunami preparedness. Governor Kenneth Mapp has proclaimed the week of March 13th to the 19th as Tsunami Preparedness Week 2016. On Thursday, the Virgin Islands Territorial Emergency Management Agency, or VITIMA, will be leading the local participation in Carib Wave 16, a regional tsunami response exercise. News News April Night has more. On Thursday, residents all over the territory will hear these sirens go off. That's part of the territory-wide tsunami drill organized by the Virgin Islands Territorial Emergency Management Agency, or VITIMA. During that time, you will hear an alarm. Uh, you will hear an actual voice message. Uh, if it was, in fact, there was a, a tsunami, it will be giving you directions of what needs to happen. This year, they're involving various agencies, businesses, and schools who've either signed up to be part of the drill or were contacted by Vitima. Some of these entities, including some of the schools, will be doing actual evacuations. The Virgin Islands legislature, territorial-wise, uh, the Water and Power Authority, which is a semi-autonomous agency, is going to be actually participating, doing an actual evacuation. Uh, the schools, again, is the Juanita Garden Elementary School in St. Croix, the Alamulla uh, Elementary School in St. Thomas, and the Julia Sprow Junior High School in St. John. According to Director Barnes, they also fixed some issues with the clarity of last year's speakers that prevented some residents from participating in the drill. Uh, some of the comments we had last year that it was muffled, uh, folks could not understand, and so they were able to come down, and this whole week they spent uh, retweaking uh, the 22 sirens that are territorial-wise, and they also did some work with uh, the repeater, uh, for the system. The Vitima director reminds everyone it's important to be prepared at all times as disasters can strike without a warning. Reporting for News 2, I'm April Knight. Director Barnes also said the drill is a good time for those living in inundation zones or low-lying areas to find safe zones that are most accessible to their areas. The partnership in Hope, St. John, PIH, will appear in an open community forum sponsored by the Coral Bay Community Council Wednesday evening, March 16th, at 6 p.m. at the Johns Foley Learning Center in Coral Bay, St. John, to discuss reopening the Guy Benjamin School as a community resource center. PIH hopes to learn from a broad cross-section of the community the degree in, of interest in various uses serving youth and adult populations. The size and layout of the building creates the possibility of a number of different nonprofit community uses. The Virgin Islands Department of Education has partnered with the Partnership in Hope to make reuse of this facility a possibility. 
The Virgin Isles Department of Education will be hosting its annual Territorial Spelling Bee on Wednesday, March 16th at the BCB Middle School Auditorium that begins at 10 a.m. Top spellers from public, private, and parochial schools in both districts will compete for a chance to represent the territory at the Scripps National Spelling Bee May 22nd, May 22nd to the 27th in Washington, D.C. In tonight's VI History Moment, we remember VI Bambula icon Mary Ann Christopher. Bambula is a dance that came with the slaves from West Africa when they first came to the Caribbean. And variations of this dance appear throughout the Caribbean. Christopher was known for her tireless work in keeping the African dance alive. She trained with Gina Sanison and founded the Joseph Gomez Bambula Group on St. Thomas, where she taught generations of women the Bambula. She was known for her participation and her role in playing the part of 19th century pole strike leader Queen Kazaya for the Dollar for Dollar Cultural and History Tour. Christopher died in 2013 after a car accident in Maryland. She was 68. The coal workers of the former Danish West Indies represented resilience. They balanced hundreds of baskets weighing close to 100 pounds of coal on their heads from the 1850s to the 1920s to fuel the steamships that came into the St. Thomas Harbor, transporting goods, mail, and passengers between the Caribbean, South America, North America, and Europe. It was backbreaking work for which they made $1 a day for carrying 200 baskets of coal onto the vessels that docked along the water's edge. They got through this work with their fighting songs, dance, and drums which fueled the successful strike on September 12, 1892, and ultimately won them better pay. Easter time means Easter egg hunts for the young ones. While we continue to hunt for the events to share them with you, here are two to mark on your calendar. The St. John Administrator's Office will be holding a hunt at the Battery for pre-kindergarten sixth graders. There will be prizes, games, face painting, music, and more. That's Saturday, March 26, from 12 to 4 p.m. Also, Impact in Your World Christian Ministries invites children to their second annual egg drop hunt that will take place also on Saturday, March 26 at 11 a.m. at the Sheldon Mali High School field. This egg drop hunt will be different from any other hunt, they say. There will be bouncers, vendors, and a helicopter dropping the eggs and prizes will be given out to children who, to the children who collects the most eggs. The Advertising American Federation hosts the advertising industry's most prestigious competition in the U.S., recognizing creative excellence in advertising. The competition is comprised of three tiers, starting with local competition, such as the Caribbean Advertising Federation, then to Florida in the district uh, competition, then the National American Advertising Awards, 33 different companies representing seven island nations, including Barbados, Grand Cayman, Trinidad and Tobago, and U.S. Virgin Islands entered. MLB Creative of St. Thomas placed in the top winners list for Best of Print Collateral, Best Graphic Design, and Art Direction for the Masters of the Hunt Business Cards. In addition to 17 Gold and Silver Addy Awards, eight went to Frenchtown Brewing Company for branding, pack packaging, and more. Congratulations to MLB. Now in Washington, Administrator Maria Contreras Sweet, the head of the U.S. Small Business Administration, announced this year's Small Business Person of the Year winners from the 50 states, the District of Columbia, Puerto Rico, Guam, and the U.S. Virgin Islands. Brianne Betty and Ryan Skinner, owners of flagship LLC in St. Thomas, they are recognized. The business